Greetings, y'all. Once again, break bread, not hearts on the scene. And I want y'all to keep your eyes keen on the one thing. Picking up from last week, we're going to keep talking about vision. Vision. You know, that's the sun right there, which gives us the life force. Allows the plants to grow around us, everything to grow around us. We need that sunlight with the balance of the darkness, of course, but the sunlight with the water, soil, fresh air, not only for things that come out of the earth, but for what comes from us, from our hearts, from our sun. Remember, the sun is what provides us light to let us know to do what's right. When we follow our heart's might, then we could achieve anything that we put within our sight, right? So today we're going to be doing some buttermilk biscuits. I'll start the morning off, right? So in this bowl right here, I got a bit of flour, baking soda, baking powder, sugar, and salt. I have some butter. So I cut the butter. It's about uh, six ounces of butter. Um, a box of butter comes as one pound. Each stick is usually four ounces, you know, four times four equals 16. Uh, so 16 ounces makes one pound of butter. So I have about six ounces of butter right here, roughly about a stick and a half, um, cut up into cubes that I'm gonna mix into my flour mixture. So I put it in the freezer to chill, that way the butter would not melt while it's being mixed because I want it to stay cold for it to melt while it's baking to make my biscuits nice and flaky. So I'm putting my butter right into my flour mixture here. So my butter and my flour mixture, as you see here. Now I'm making buttermilk biscuits. Buttermilk biscuits and bean burgers. So I'm adding in about one cup of buttermilk. So buttermilk is just whole milk that usually some type of acidity is added to it. Um, once the acidity gets added to it, it changes the, the chemical composition of the milk to a certain degree, the pH level changes. So when you cook with it, it usually makes things light and fluffy. So pancakes are one thing that usually take buttermilk in the recipe. So you can make pancakes without buttermilk, but when you add the buttermilk, it adds a different layer of flair and essence and lightness to it. So putting in one cup of buttermilk Put it in my small mixing bowl first. Alright, so I got one cup of buttermilk. Like I was saying before, it's all about vision. You know, you gotta think, did the cow have a vision that he was gonna produce the milk that one day would end up in my kitchen and give put me in the position and be cooking with his you know with his product that I'm now going to share with y'all to make these biscuits with who knows who knows so I got my flour my bowl roll my sleeves up real quick get to work so as I was saying it's all about vision it's all about vision, you know, what you wake up with in your heart, you know, I asked y'all last week on the assignment sheet, like, what do you have in your heart that you want to share with the world, you know, we all have something, you may not be aware of it all the time, but we all have something that we want to share with the world around us, we're all unique, and that uniqueness is not something that we should be afraid of, it's something that we should cherish and share, you know, we all have something to bring to the table that will make the world around us a much brighter place. Because if you did not exist, your light would not be able to shine. And without your light shining in the world, then how could I ever think about um, bringing up mine? You know, we're all in this together. We're all in this together. You know, so this, this week, we're talking about our vision you know, whether it's a culinary vision if you like to cook or just your basic outlook in life and just a few steps you can take to just make that come to reality, you know? Because like I said, 
Everything starts from a seed. And what does a seed do? It believes. And when it believes, it sprouts its roots. And from its roots is where we find our truth. Let's see. So, in 2012, I had worked in restaurants for several years already up to that point. But for me, I found that there was a lack of love in the food that was being produced in the places I was working in, you know? And it's like food is all about connection and love and nutrition. So what I thought was like, you know, I'm going to keep, um, I want to keep cooking, but how, how, like, how am I going to make that happen? You know? So I remember it was 2012. I said my birthday is December, uh, December 5th. Exactly. If any of y'all want to get me any, any gifts, <laughs> But so I turned I turned 25 at that point, and I was like, you know what? For my birthday, I, like I want to be happy. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna quit quit my job, the restaurant I was working at at the time. And I was like, you know what? In 2012, they said the world was gonna end. Uh, most of you y'all are old enough, or you were born already, but like the Mayan calendar was gonna end, and all these other crazy things were gonna happen. So I was like, you know what, if the world's gonna end, like, might as well be happy in the process, you know? So also, I'm just working the buttermilk into the flour to make my ball of dough. If any of you have ever made, like, you know, dumplings before or some, it's a similar process. Just, you know, you're incorporating the liquid into the flour mixture until you have a ball of dough. So I said, all right, put my job, 25. I threw a huge feast where I was living at the time. And what I did was I invited over everybody I knew from all my walks of life. So people I knew from <coughs> college, people I knew from growing up, people I did martial arts with, people that I made music with. And I was like, listen, just come over to my house. I'll be cooking all day. <clears throat> just, you know, bring yourself, bring an appetite, be ready to have a good time. So I cooked like maybe like 10 or 12 courses throughout the whole course of a Saturday. You know, I did like my mac and smile, which is my signature mac and cheese, my roots rock curry chicken, um, a seafood bake with like mussels and clams and shrimp with like lemon and lime that I roasted off in the oven. Um, I made a Caesar salad from scratch, like making Caesar dressing, which usually have anchovies and stuff in it. Um, and I was just bringing food down all day, like into my basement where like friends were hanging out and it was crazy because it was like a blizzard that day, right? It was like a couple, a good amount of snow that fell and people came from like all over Long Island and the city and Jersey and upstate just to come and like kick it with me for the day and and enjoy the food and the vibes you know I had a friend's band that was playing music all day in the base in my basement so it was like super cool just really really good vibes really good vibes so at the end of the night what I noticed was that people who never knew each other before that point seemed to be like best friends you know, because what food is that common denominator? Food is that common denominator. So I was like, this is like what food is supposed to do. You know, working in restaurants, you like lose that aspect sometimes because you're just so caught up with like producing this plate of food, putting it out to the customer, not even know who you're actually serving because a lot of times you're behind like a wall in a kitchen. You don't even get the, you know, the privilege to see the people that you're cooking for. So. Once I saw people just connected through food, I was like, yes, like I want to cook for sure. Um, this is how I want to do it. You know, just bringing people together. Like I said, food is that common denominator. So from that vision that I had, I tried to figure out ways to manifest the position to put myself in a position that way I could let my heart shine. And what my soul made me listen to was that I had to bring people together through food. So, yeah, that's, I like made a uh, an event for it on Facebook, which I invited everybody through. 
And I happen to name that event Break Bread Not Hearts, like you see here on my, you know, Break Bread Not Hearts. So um, I was like, you know what, that's an awesome name. I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna run with it. You know, that's gonna be the name of my business. And you know, that's what I did, that's what I did. I just had that vision, listened to my heart, and that allowed my soul to put me in the position to figure, realize that I could do anything if my sight is set on the mission, you know? And that mission was to just bring people together through food. So there's, there's many, many ways you can do that. You know, many ways you can do that. Whether you like cooking or anything else, it doesn't have to be cooking necessarily at all. So, like I said, we're doing the, the biscuits with black, with bean burgers. I'm using kidney beans. So what I have here are some onion, is some onion, cilantro, garlic, habanero, and then I have some kidney beans here. So I took the, I cooked the beans already, or you could use canned beans. I put them in the oven to dry them out a bit. That way my burgers wouldn't be too mushy. I got, I wanted to get a lot of the moisture out of there. So I have that set up. So I'm gonna mix together those beans with the cilantro, <clears throat> habanero, some of the garlic, and a whole lot of love, and a whole lot of love. So my next step right now is, you know, I want y'all to think about, you know, you have your vision, the next step is you gotta re figure out your position, right? Like which way you going? Like where, where do you wanna, where are you? And which way can you move, you know? You can go up, down, left, right. You can go in a circle. Everything is a cycle, you know? So it's like, where are you and what directions do you have to go to use your vision? You know, imagine your vision is the sun. It's gonna shine every day. Your vision is always there. Even on a cloudy day, your vision is always there. Behind those clouds, there's always the sun. So taking your vision, realizing what your position is and realizing what tools you have to make your dreams come true. What tools do you have to make your dreams come true? I've always heard the saying, or I've tried to follow the saying, is you do what you can with what you have, you know? Our circumstances in life may not always be ideal, may not always be ideal, but what you do is you do your best with what you can do your best with what you can. I'm gonna put a little flour down on my counter here. Okay. The reason I'm putting the flour down is I don't want my um, I don't want the dough to stick as I'm rolling out the biscuits. I don't want the dough to stick as I'm rolling out the biscuits. See, I got my flour here. What I'm gonna do now is put my flour down, my bowl of dough. I love working with dough, by the way. It's the first thing I did when I worked in restaurants was making pizza. So just working with dough, it's just something very uh, relaxing about it. You get to, you know, you see I'm putting my fingers into it. You're, you're, you know, you're literally putting your life force, your energy into your food, your vision of what you want this dish to be. <laughs> so, yeah, it's the end of 2012. Started Break Bread Not Heart simply from a vision, from a dream. You know, simply from a vision and a dream. Build the 
this sleeve up too. A little flour on there, that's fine. You're supposed to get dirty when you're cooking in the kitchen. Gotta get hands on. So what I'm doing now is I'm rolling out my dough. I'm making pockets of the butter. So I'm, to, as I'm rolling out the dough, I'm folding it back onto itself. That way there'll be layers of butter, layers of butter that will expand as the biscuits are baking. That will expand as the biscuits, as the butter releases its gases and moisture along with the baking soda and baking powder, creating, giving me layers of a flaky dough. So pretty much think about every time I fold it, that's gonna be another set of layers. I put a little more flour down, then I fold it, I'm gonna get another set of layers. Put my flour down, fold it, get another set of layers. One more. Good roll here. And give it, give it one more. Good block. Okay. So this last one, I'm just gonna pat it down with my hands. And just yeah. So there we have it. We have our dough right here. So. I'm taking the top of a jar lid and I'm just pushing down. I'm cutting out a biscuit. What I have here is one biscuit. This looks like a biscuit would look, except it's, you know, obviously it's raw. So I would do these fairly, usually I maybe get like nine to 10 biscuits out of, you know, this recipe right here, but I'm gonna make them a bit larger because I'm gonna use the biscuits as like a bun for my burgers. The biscuits as a bun for my burgers. So I'm gonna, Push these down a little bit. Okay. And then once the dough, once you cut it out, all you gotta do is just literally roll it back together. Flour so it can stick. shape change bounce back you know a lot of times in life things don't may not go our way it's reality you know things don't always end up being the way we want them to be but what's most important is that we know how to bounce back be resilient resilient you know so you take your vision it puts this and then you realize what your position is, what your skills are, right? Your position is knowing what your skills are, what strengths you have, what your talents are. And from that, you 
put your light into the world to shine. You put your light into the world to shine. So I have these six biscuits here. I have my oven preheated. So what I'm going to do next is slide those into the oven so those can bake. I'm gonna slide those into the oven so that it can bake. So I've had my oven, the rack, putting it on the middle rack of my oven. I have my oven set to 425. I'm actually gonna, yeah, have my oven set to 425. And these are gonna take anywhere from um, 17 to 20 minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer for 18 minutes there. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set my timer <clears throat> for 18 minutes. All right, so now that that's going, my next step now is getting my bean burgers going. So like I said, y'all, it all starts with vision, your vision, right? Meaning the sunlight that comes out every day when we wake up, whether we see it or not, whether it's behind those clouds or not, we know that it's always there. We forget on the cloudy day that it's always there. Even in the night, you know, it may not be in our sight, but you can always know in the darkness, you are aware of what to do that is right, right? So that vision, AKA our sight, allows us to be, allows us to realize our position, allows real meaning you look at yourself, right? You take a look at yourself just as a, as a human being and you say, like, how am I special? How am I special? You know, because you are. It's, you're not asking yourself if you're special. I'm not telling you to ask yourself if you're special. I know I'm special. I know all of you are. I want you to ask yourself how, how am I special? Right? Not me, but you ask yourself, how am I special? And we all have something that we can bring to the table, AKA to the world around us to make our lives beautiful, more beautiful. So I have here cilantro, red onion, a little bit of habanero, and some garlic. So I'm gonna take some of this red onion here, I have of it. And I have some olives also, because the olives are gonna add you know, a nice bit of saltiness to my burger, so I won't have to add you know, too much sodium or salt to it, but the olives will give it a nice flavor and a balanced texture with the softness of the beans. So there, I just diced up my onion real quick. I'm gonna take some of my olives now. So the olives have a natural saltiness to it. That's so just gonna add some great flavor and also texture to these burgers. Notice your vision, your sunlight, your light that shines every day, whether you're aware of it shining or not. Even on a cloudy day, remember, your, your light is here to shine and stay. Even on a cloudy day, your light is here to shine and stay. You realize your light, your potential, what makes you special. You look at your position, right? What do I have to offer the world and what resources do I have to make that happen. It's like, if I'm an artist and I like to draw, it's like, do I have crayons or colored pencils or even just pencils and paper, something to write, something to put, you know, the images in my brain into the world around me. If I like to, if I love cars, it's like, all right, 
do I have a car to, you know, if I like auto mechanics, is there, do I have a car to work on? It's like, all right, maybe, maybe not. If I don't, then I can watch like YouTube videos on how to fix cars or build engines or read books about it. <laughs> it's like, if I like to, if I like beauty and aesthetics, it's like, all right, I can practice by, you know, braiding my hair and doing my makeup and say, doing the makeup with my friends or, or cutting my friend's hair and practicing, you know, you have more resources available to you than sometimes we realize, you know, we think we got to be perfect to execute what we want in terms of our dreams. We don't need it to be perfect. We just need enough. You know, like I said, you try to do what you can with what you have. You try to do what you can with what you have. So you see, I have some spinach I chopped up, my onion, habanero, garlic, and then I'm going to mix in now my beans. So I have my beans, like I said, that I put in the oven to roast to let them dry out a bit. Takes the excess moisture out of the beans. Takes the excess moisture out of the beans. Because I've made this recipe before and sometimes it ends up being too much liquid in it. And then what happens is, as you make the patties and start cooking them, they start to fall apart. They start to fall apart. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is roast them to get that extra moisture out of there. Now I'm gonna mash them up. So for example, I knew I wanted to cook. So one of the first steps I did is I went to Westchester County, um, you know, the Westchester County government building in White Plains. And I went to, there's a person called a county clerk that pretty much, you know, keeps records for the county that correspond with the state. So you can walk in there. All you need is $35 and what you do is you write down the name of what your business wants to be, who you want your business to be, <clears throat> what type of business it is, and you pay a $35 fee, and you now have your business registered in your name. So even if you're not gonna start necessarily doing what you're doing right now, in terms of what I mean by that, like, Say if you want to become a chef, but you don't have all the means to say open a restaurant right now, tomorrow, you can still go to the county clerk office building and register the name of your business. That way it's yours. No one can take it from you. It is yours. It is yours. So I have my mixture here, my bean, onion, habanero, spinach, garlic, so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add an egg right into there. So like I said, for $35, you can go register the name of your business. And then that's the start right there, you know? So I did that. That was, you know, once I, I knew I wanted to cook, like I said. So I went, registered the name of my business, got a certificate for it. And from there, I was, I tried to figure out how I wanted to serve people. So for example, someone can give me a call and they're gonna say, hey, I have a birthday party coming up. Can you cook for my birthday? So I added the egg in here, putting a little bit of salt. Can you cook for my birthday? I love doing birthday parties. Um, I think the oldest person that I've made a birthday cake for was 95 years old, 95 years old. Um, actually, I haven't been in contact with that person. So, you know, God bless their soul. I hope they're still alive, you know, or maybe they've transitioned to the other side. 
but the oldest person I made a birthday cake for was 95 years old, which is awesome, an awesome feeling. So you can add breadcrumbs to this mixture too, but I'm, I want mine to be a bit lighter, so I'm not gonna add any breadcrumbs to it. So what I have now is this frying pan here. So for example, if somebody calls me up and they're like, hey, I'm having a birthday party, can you cook for me? First, I'm gonna wanna know how many people am I cooking for? Once I know how many people I'm cooking for, then I'm gonna wanna find out what they like to eat, you know? What do, what do you or the person you're throwing the birthday party for, what do they like to eat? What do they like to eat? From that point, I will then create a menu for them. And it's, you know, so I'll say like, all right, I have this signature basmati rice stir fry dish. It's like a Caribbean style rice and peas that I stir fry with ginger, garlic, cabbage, carrots, uh, celery, leeks. I put slow roasted like jerk chicken thighs on top and it gets my signature apricot sesame sauce with a whole lot of love. They're gonna be like, oh man, that sounds really good. Like, I'm like, all right, so we can do that. And you, you know, you want to provide like a full meal for people. So say, I'll do that rice stir fry as the entree for an appetizer. I may do a salad. So I'll do a salad with apples and kale, maybe throw in some roasted mushrooms, roasted corn, a few other things in there as an appetizer. Um, if they want another appetizer item, you know, you can maybe do something fried like so I have these um, bacalao fritters that I do. So it's like saltfish, salted codfish, that um, you take, you mix in the saltfish with like onions, peppers, form little patties out of them and fry them or make them in like little balls and fry them that way. I'll make a sauce, say with some coconut milk, a little bit of like fig jam to add some sweetness to it, some smoked paprika, to add some smokiness and spice to it, a bit of lemon for some acidity. So what I'll do is I'll create a menu for them. You know, I always try to have a dessert so I can say, you know, I can bake you a wet uh, birthday cake, not a wedding cake, a birthday cake. I can have these signature uh, cookies, I have banana bread blondies, I have ginger zing cookies, I have chocolate dank cookies, I have a few things that you may love. So I'll come up with a custom recipe for them you know, based on what their desires are. And then I will create a meal. You know, I'll give them the menu based on how many people that I'm cooking for. And what the menu is, is how I would determine the price of what I would charge them per person. That is how I would determine the price of what I would charge them Per person. So here's a shot of my muffins fresh out of the oven. Everyone's contacted me. I've created a menu for them. Once I know the menu and the number of people that I'm cooking for, I then can give them a price per person of what I would charge them for my time and my services. So I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna flip this over. Hardest part, you don't want it to fall apart. Okay. How much I would charge them for my services because your time is valuable. You know, you should get compensated for the hard work you put in when you're doing what you love. So you see, I have my burger there. slowly sizzling away in the oil. I can also bake it in the oven. You don't have to, you know, fry it like this. You can bake it in the oven, and that's another option. Vision. That's what we start off with, is our vision. You look at yourself in the world, and you, like, you ask yourself, what is your position? What do you have to bring to the table, and where can I go? What directions can I move? 
with the resources I have, you know, to make one, multiply into two, two into four, four into eight, eight into 16, you know, things just multiply over time through hard work. Knowing your position, where are you in the world, and knowing what you have to offer the world. Knowing what you have to offer the world around you is, you know, essential. You just have to trust in yourself, believe that you have something to offer, because we all do, we all do. We all figure that out at all different, at different points of our lives, you know, we're not gonna all figure that out at the same time, but we all have something that we can offer to the world. We all have something that we can offer to the world. So, I'm just gonna cut up a little bit of cilantro. You can see the steam coming out of it when I open it up. If you can actually, yeah, it's nice and hot, nice and hot. So you see here we have our buttermilk biscuit with a bean burger. It's just like a regular burger, but with, you know, try to keep things plant-based, healthy, and delicious. You know, we don't always need to eat meat or we may not always have access to meat. You know, in cultures you can only consume what you have around you, you know, which we'll go into depth in a later episode. But in general, the focus here is to know that you are the light, right? You are the light that shines into the world. Even on a cloudy day, your light is here to stay. And you take your vision, which is your light, and know that you have the precision of your position to make your dreams take flight. You look at what you have around you and you make that multiply. You take the little what you have and you make it multiply. Um, you know, it just starts off with just having the dream, knowing that you want to do something, and in time you will get there. Trust me. I've built this business literally from nothing at all. Not from nothing, but from very little. And I have a good amount of abundance right now, and I'm always working to attain more. Not for the sake of material wealth, but to attain more in terms of the more I'm able to prosper, the more I'm able to help those around me, you know? Because like I said, Break Bread, Not Hearts is the name of my business. And our focus is cooking up community, you know? So we use food to bring people together. So whatever it is you do in life, you want to make sure you do it for the sake of creating Community, community, meaning bringing people together. You want to do what you love. If you do what you love, trust me, the money and the notoriety and the fame and all those other things will come in time. But you want to follow your heart. You want to follow your heart. Hope you enjoy this episode of our culinary pursuits together. Because remember, you take your vision, realize your position, and that you have the position to move in any direction to bring us together and conquer all the division. And once that happens, you know that your mission is not possible, but it is possible. And any obstacle that you face can be overcome with the proper mindset that you are optimal, that you are one, that you are the only one of you. So everything that you do to shine and make your light grow and know that you're divine, will make everything around you combine and come together in community. That way we can all know the beauty of our unity, of our uniqueness. So we take this step together, you know, to share our dreams with each other. I'm sharing my dream, my passion with you, and I hope you all can share that with me. So like last week I'd asked, what do you have in your heart that you want to share with the world? And I want you to keep thinking on that as we continue on over these next set of classes and uh, interactions with each other. So I thank y'all. Peace and love. So I have provided two documents for you. One of them is a link to 
the Westchester County Clerk's website where you will find the form to start your own business, to register the name of your business, to get a business certificate uh, for a business that you would start. So I would like for you to fill out that form. It doesn't have to be a culinary business, but just brainstorm and think of an idea of the type of business you would want to start. You would come up with a business name, uh, the type of businesses that it is, and write a short description of what your business would do and how it would improve your community. So a short description of what your business would do and how it would improve your community. There is also a second article I've included from a write-up I received in Westchester Magazine about five black chefs in Westchester that you should follow. I would like for you to begin brainstorming what a reporter would write about your business that you would be starting. What beautiful, positive, uplifting things would they say about your dream and your passion? Again, this is a culinary course, so you can create a culinary business that someone would talk about, or you can talk about one of your passions in general, but the main idea is to focus on being an entrepreneur in whatever your business is. You want to be an entrepreneur, someone who is willing to take a risk, not have a boss. You want to be your own boss and for you to achieve success in doing what you love. After the video ends, I would like for you to begin both of these activities filling out your business certificate registration form and to begin writing an article highlighting your skills, your dreams, and your passions for the world to know about you and your entrepreneurial skills with the type of business that you would start for you to be independent and in control of your future.